This is a focus on CPAP specifically for the BLS provider. This only applies to EMTs who are trained, equipped, and regionally approved to use CPAP. Hi, today we're going to talk about continuous positive airway pressure, better known as CPAP. Some of you may know this uh, if you have a friend or relative or yourself that use uh, CPAP for sleep apnea at night, but we also use it in the EMS realm. So if your squad is appropriately trained and equipped, you can use this intervention. So there's a couple different parts to the CPAP devices that I'm going to show you. One is your mask. And on the mask, it has some place for the head straps to uh, connect up to, to keep it firm and, and sealed to the face. Back here is the headgear, and these look a little bit different with different manufacturers. But basically, it goes around the head to attach to the mask. And this is the tubing part, okay? In this particular device, it has the flow rates that will give you the amount of pressure that you want. So if you're starting out with five centimeters of water as pressure, uh, for this particular device, you would use eight or nine liters per minute for a flow rate. And then you would, uh, if you want to go up to 10 for the pressure, it would be 13 to 14 liters. Uh, most regulators will go to 15. Okay. So this just hooks up to here like that, and then it goes on the patient, which we're going to show you in a little while. So then over here, we have a different device, uh, same idea. This just hooks up to your oxygen tank. And with this particular device, this hooks up like this. And you have directions that come with your package. And it tells you, again, if you're going to do our 5 centimeters of pressure, then it's 8 liters per minute. And then if you're doing 10, it's going to be 12 liters per minute. So you should pretty much always start with 5 and see how your patient does. So why are we going to use CPAP? This is for patients that are having difficulty breathing, moderate to severe difficulty breathing. They will be tachypnic. They will probably be using accessory muscle use. They may have nasal flaring, purse breathing. Uh, they will probably have some sort of wheezing or crackles or rails in their lung fields uh, because of pulmonary edema, COPD, uh, or asthma. So this is a great uh, device to use to help them get better, reduce their respiratory distress, and avoid intubation. So if you have a patient that is wheezing and you want to give them an albuterol treatment while you're giving them CPAP, what you can do if you don't have a CPAP device that has a, uh, a port for the uh, nebulizer is that you can insert the nebulizer between the mask and the other part of the CPAP tubing. So you would put one end in here and you would put this end in here. And you need to have a secondary oxygen source to power your treatment for the nebulizer. So this is your CPAP hose. That would be hooked up to the uh, leader flow that you'd want for your starting pressure at five centimeters. And then this one would be hooked up to six liters per minute to power your treatment. You also want to make sure that your mask is upright with your albuterol treatment so that the treatment does not spill out. Some of the contraindications for CPAP is you don't want to use it where someone may already have uh, a pneumothorax from chest trauma. Uh, you have to be very careful if they are uh, hypotensive because this is going to be putting air into their lungs and forcing air into their lungs and creating pressure, which is going to lower their blood pressure. So you have to be careful if they're already hypotensive. You want them to be able to follow directions. Um, and be awake enough to do that, as well as being able to control their own airway. So you, this is not a treatment that you would use on an unresponsive patient. This is Annie. She's a 65-year-old female patient who is having difficulty breathing. We've placed her on a non-rebreather mask at 15 liters per minute, but she is still having great difficulty breathing. She's tachypnic, she is using accessory muscles, and uh, when we listened to her lung sounds, she had some coarse crackles on both sides, so we are thinking that she has some pulmonary edema. So we've decided that we're gonna switch her over to a CPAP mask. So Paige is gonna coach our patient, and Srimana is gonna apply our CPAP mask. Annie, the mask you have on is not providing enough oxygen. We need to put a CPAP mask on. The mask is gonna go over your nose and over your mouth and strap behind your head and it'll blow air into your airway to get oxygen to your lungs. 
This will make you feel better. It's important to have an appropriately sized mask for your patient. Usually you get a medium mask or a large mask with your CPAP kits. It's important to make a good seal so that any pressure that you're putting into the mask does not leak out around the mouth. After your mask is appropriately applied, we're going to recheck vital signs and pulse oximetry and reevaluate our patient. CPAP may lower the patient's blood pressure because of preload reduction. Monitor blood pressure closely when using CPAP. The techniques described in this video are included to spark discussion, not as authoritative practice directives. Consider the benefits and limitations of each technique and discuss with your colleagues and medical director. The content is intended as an educational resource only and not intended to supersede any state, regional, or local guidelines, protocols, policies, medical direction, or any other authority.